The Big Bang Theory is our best guess about how the universe began. It simply means that the universe began with infinitely hot and dense single point, which then inflated and stretched. When we look out into the distant galaxy, we see that they're all moving away from us. Our technology doesn't allow us to look back at the universe's birth, and much of what we know about the Big Bang comes from mathematical formulas and models. So, did the Big Bang actually happen, or is there something that's still out there hiding from us? The majority of the astronomical community accepts the theory. However, there are some theorists out there who have an alternative explanation rather than the Big Bang. There's really no doubt that at some level, the Big Bang theory gives us an accurate description of the earliest stage of the universe. But how accurate? What part of the story are we absolutely sure about? And what part is still genuinely a question? Hello and welcome to Astropy. And today we're going to talk about the evidence that gives us so much certainty about the Big Bang Theory and find out what part of the theory is still highly uncertain or possibly even just wrong. The universe is expanding. Light from distant galaxies is red shifted and stretched to longer wavelengths and the further away the galaxy is, the more its light is red shifted. In context with the theory of relativity, the only sensible reason for this is the fact that the universe is expanding now and light traveling through space is stretched. So this means that the universe five minutes ago was smaller than it is now. If you change that five minutes into a billion years, it means the universe was smaller. The further back you go, the universe gets much smaller, which means once upon a time it was tiny and compact. 400,000 years after our hypothetical Big Bang, the entire universe was still as hot, opaque, and dense as the inside of a star, as it was full of protons and electrons. A plasma, as the time went on, the universe expanded and became much colder. This plasma slipped into a gas as the first hydrogen atoms formed, and at the same moment, the infrared light trapped inside plasma was free to travel to the cosmos and it's still traveling today. But it's no longer infrared anymore and stretched into microwaves. But the good news is we can still see it. It's called Cosmic Microwave Background or CMB in short. We'll talk about CMB in more detail in the next video, but for today, let's just emphasize that this radiation is almost impossible to explain without a universe that was much smaller, hotter, and denser. So at least that far back in time, the Big Bang Theory is right. When we look at galaxies from vast distances, we're also looking back in time. We see that these very first galaxies are very different from our galaxies, and this proves that the universe is also evolving to some extent. But all of these only get us back to 400,000 years after the Big Bang. But we can rewind further to the very first second after the Big Bang. At the first few seconds after the Big Bang, we predict the universe was much smaller and hotter and denser, allowing atoms to undergo nuclear fusion and create heavier elements in a process we call primordial nucleosynthesis. The Big Bang Theory tells us how long these elements were fused and at what temperature and also predicts the proportion of deuterium, helium and lithium that should have been formed. It's on startling agreement with what we see out there in the universe now. The Big Bang Theory has strong, powerful, and direct evidence almost down to the first second, but it simply can't explain what happened on that very first second of time. Our understanding of physics is very good, down to the Earth age of 10 to the power of minus 32 seconds when the entire universe was around the size of a grain of sand. This is because we have recreated this condition of the universe at this time. We have recreated these insane energies in our particle accelerators. We checked that our physics works under this condition, so we have a lot of confidence in the Big Bang Theory. However, this is where our certainty ends. Earlier than 10 to the power of minus 32 seconds, we just can't produce the energy needed to test our understanding of physics in those conditions. But the major confusion lies within that very first second of our universe. How can something come out of nothing? Let's ignore that part for now as the Big Bang Theory itself can't explain it. The Large Hadron Collider located in Switzerland helps us to unravel the mystery right after the Big Bang. It pushes protons or ions to near the speed of light inside a 27 kilometer ring of superconducting magnets. After the discovery of the Higgs boson in the Hadron Collider, it proved the existence of an invisible process that gives all particles their mass or substance. Practically, it has not changed anything in our life, but it's a huge step on a journey towards understanding how the universe works. 
Fast forward to the first 400,000 years after the Big Bang. The universe is quite bigger now, but it's still about 1,000 times smaller than the modern universe. It's full of hot hydrogen plasma, but at 400,000 years, it cooled down to a state where it formed the first atoms and released cosmic background radiation. We now see this light as almost perfectly smooth, but that smoothness only has one explanation that when the radiation was released, the universe was almost exactly the same temperature everywhere. Let's look at this example. When you add milk to the tea, it'll smooth out and become the same temperature after a bit of time. Well, the universe works on the same principle of heat transfer. But when the cosmic background radiation was released, there had not been enough time for this mixing to have occurred, and the universe to reach a uniform temperature. Which is why it's so weird. The distinct path of the universe on this direction to have the same temperature and density on that direction, there needs to have been enough time for something to travel between these points. And there wasn't enough time even for light. Let's take this grain of sand sized universe at 10 to the power of negative 32 seconds. The photon emitted on the one side of the grain wouldn't have time to get to the other side, not even in 400,000 years. Although light is fast, the opposite ends of the universe were traveling apart even faster. There are a lot of things that the Big Bang Theory simply can't explain. However, the aspects of the expansion of the universe under this theory is so hard that we don't know if the basic picture is right. In this sense, we shouldn't call the Big Bang Theory as the theory of the origin of the universe, but as the theory of the expansion of our universe. However, as with every well-established theory, there are boundaries for what the Big Bang actually explains. Those boundaries are taken for granted all the time, as we don't have another better option to explain this. Hopefully one day our technology will advance, and these boundaries will be solved and help us to encompass a true origin of what we are and what our universe is. Well, someday it's also possible that we find out a new theory that has more evidence and falls within our understanding of physics. For this to happen, we need to wait and watch. Perhaps we should be exploring near home first and find out how life evolved in our solar system itself. Our understanding of space and the universe is just that theories. It's so frustrating and yet so exciting. There's also a lot of questions to answer, but our theories about the universe are still just that. It proves no matter how superior we humans feel, we're just ancient apes with smartphones on a tiny floating rock called Earth, looking into the sky and wondering how our universe works. There's so much more to learn, and it's just the beginning. Space is weird. There's a lot of things that we just can't explain. When we look up at the sky, it feels like we're the center of the universe, but we're not, and there might not be any center at all. There's an infinite amount of space to your left and right, above and below you. You see all the stars and galaxies in your observable universe expanding away from you, which makes it appear as if you're at the center of it all. But the same is true for the person standing next to you. You can watch this video to find out more about the center of the universe. We'll leave a link in the description box below. This video was sponsored by people like you. If you found any value in this content, consider liking and subscribing to our channel. Also, don't forget to download our Android app from the Play Store. We'll have a link in the description box below. We have a lot of exciting videos coming in the future, so be sure to hit that bell icon to get updated. Till then, stay safe and we'll see you in our next video. Goodbye.